These hackers have plenty of tricks up their sleeves, and today we've got an Aussie white hat hacker who hacked a John Deere tractor's computer only to install the video game Doom on it. In a simple world, that would have been quite a good prank, but the hack did reveal the flaws present in agriculture cyber security systems. Well, let's get into it. First off, we've got a hacker installing a video game on a tractor's computer. Look what we've got here. Sick Codes, an Australian hacker, hacked into a John Deere tractor's computer, and he didn't even do much. Just installed the video game Doom, and voila, that's all. Thankfully, the situation didn't do anything, but it exposed the fact that when it comes to matters of cybersecurity, the ag tech sector can do better. In fact, it should do better. Now, what this harmless little prank shows is that they haven't been taking cybersecurity seriously when it comes to agricultural technology. Even though this hacking event didn't corrupt the data of the dealer's device, it's still pretty concerning. Security analysts and experts are saying it's exactly what they had feared. With no priority given to security, this just means the sector's more vulnerable to attacks like this. If someone with criminal intentions gets the right idea, this spells danger for the agricultural sector. Coming up, why is this hacking incident a cause for concern? Here, we'll turn to the experts and see what they've got to say about this hacking incident. Sean Duca is the regional chief security officer for the cybersecurity company Palo Alto Networks. According to Duca, sometimes developers completely neglect matters of security when it comes to their devices because they fall prey to the misconception that their devices won't be targets for cyber attacks, and that, people, is where they're sorely mistaken. Any and every piece of technology that you come across on a farm, it's internet enabled. That means anyone has access to it. Such easy access to these devices means it'll be incredibly easy for hackers to hack into their operating softwares. What's worse is that these devices operate on outdated Linux and Windows CE hardware with LTE modems. All of this just exposes how vulnerable to attack the food production system is. What's more, treating cybersecurity as an afterthought has consequences. Well, we all live in modern times, and that means there's always something new when it comes to technology. Seeing the many different ways technology has been implemented in the agricultural sector, it's also important to realize how these devices need good and secure systems. In case someone hacks into these systems, and unlike sick codes who didn't have any nefarious intentions here, these hackers could just end up jeopardizing the entire food production system. They could find ways to make food more expensive. What's more, they could do something to ruin the food supply as well. Basically, they would have the power to uproot the entirety of the agricultural sector just because the software systems in agricultural tech devices were unsecure, and that, people, is something that none of us want. Let's look at all the ways cybercrime does pay. We've got a report from Palo Alto Network showing how well cybercrime pays. And interestingly, data ransom demands along with the payments have been rising since 2020. In 2020, ransom demand was somewhere along $1.3 million, but in 2021, this number had soared to a staggering $3.2 million, almost thrice more than the year before. Most cybercrime involves file encryption, naming victims on public forums, leaking stolen data online, and provision of ransomware as a service. RAAS. RAAS is kind of like an avenue for low-tech criminals to buy malicious software from high-tech hackers. They either do that through a fixed subscription, or they go for a commission, which depends on the ransom payouts. Now that we know how the world of cybercrime works, you see why it's concerning to have the agricultural industry expose itself in this way. According to Duca, somewhere between hundreds to thousands of these malicious attacks happen every day, and they cause an incredible loss to businesses. Then, you know how it could cripple the food supply chain system. Cybersecurity is no joke in that case. Following up, why did the hacker do all of this in the first place? Sick Codes is a white hat hacker. What that means is that he's basically just an ethical security hacker. He hacks systems to see how vulnerable they are to cyber attacks, and by doing so, developers are able to assess what they need to do to make their systems safer and more secure. After this hacking incident, John Deere, along with other tractor companies, have come to see the flaws that exist in their programming interfaces. Not just that, it's shown farmers that in case things ever go wrong, they should know how to repair their devices or the software in their device. Devices. Last but not the least, the importance of food security. All of this makes us realize how incredibly important food security is, especially in times like these. Hackers pose a great threat to our food production system, and while many of them could be just in it for the big bucks, some of them go beyond the problems of data theft. Rogue hackers could hack into these systems and then use the extracted information for political gains. There's a lot to think about here in terms of national security if the latter proves to be true. Saba Sinai, a lecturer at CQ University, poses the question that if a large scale cyber attack were to take place, and it targeted multiple meat processors at the same time, how are we going to face that? Are we prepared for the consequences? And do we have any safety nets in place to make sure the damages aren't too much? Any cyber attack on the food production system would result in incredible disruption. Farming industries would be uprooted completely, and that would just be the tipping point. Eventually, the customers are going to be affected too. It'll have plenty of serious consequences. All of this hints at one thing. Developers need to take action to make these systems more secure. Now, 
in other related news. First up, a shortage of workers in the Northern Territory's mango industry. Australia's Northern Territory seems to be facing a severe lack of workers as mango picking season draws near. Because of this shortage of workers in the industry, there's a rising fear that not enough mangoes will be picked this season to be delivered to the nation's various supermarkets. Industry groups have already said they're lacking around almost a thousand workers. That's a huge figure. Paul Burke, a representative from NT Farmers, mentioned how they opened up as many as 317 job positions but received applications from a mere 13 people. With this shortage of workers, it means the currently employed people will have to put in extra hours to collect all the harvest. But that's not all. It also means that a lot of the fruit might not even get picked. Next, utilizing the latest drone technology as an alternative to honeybee pollination. Polybee, a Singaporean company, has put many of its latest drones to trial at the University of Western Sydney in a project involving research on pollination. Basically, they're testing to see if they can use drones as an alternative to honeybee pollination. Well, agriculture keeps advancing every day. Now, the fact is that when it comes to pollination in packed environments, honeybees tend to struggle a lot, and bumblebees, the preferred insects for pollination in glasshouses in the northern hemisphere, can't be imported to Australia. So, there's a desperate need for some good alternatives to these bees. In these trials, the drones will be used to pollinate tomato and strawberry crops. Using drones can be a great game changer because not only is it extremely effective and efficient, it's going to help decrease the cost of input. Finally, a bird cast can help farmers in protecting avian life. After two decades of incredibly vigorous research, we've got this latest web tool called BirdCast. It's been developed by Australian National University's Sustainable Farms Program, and it even won a National Science Award, the Eureka Prize for Applied Environmental Research. Farmers can use the tool to see how they can improve the bird life on their farms. What BirdCast does is that it assesses farming practices employed on a particular farm, and in light of that, shows ways in which farmers can change these practices to accommodate the avian life on their land. The tools tell farmers the multiple different species present, as well as a rough estimate of their residing population. BirdCast comes with an amazing prediction tool, and that's especially helpful for farmers who want to increase the biodiversity levels of their farms. A lot of bird species face the threat of endangerment, and BirdCast collects all the data it needs to help farmers implement sustainable farming practices. The app advises them on what types of plantations are best for a particular species of birds, and all the ways farmers can increase the diversity of the farm's bird population. The best part is that it's quite an accurate app, since it took such a long time to finalize it and put it out there for commercial use. That's a wrap for this video. Want to hear more news related to farming and agriculture? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!